Where's the camera? <laughs> I wanted to give a shout out to all my bros in sound. I just finished recording a massive, really cool Wasatcher, you know, video and uh, for Utah Video. And it was great. Matter of fact, it was so good that, you know, if you were really spiritual and lip synced, or uh, red lips, it's wonderful. But for all you sound people, you know what it's like to not do a sound check? Hey, let me tell you. I have recorded so many videos thinking because I hadn't changed the settings, that I hadn't done anything to the camera, or I hadn't done anything at all different, even though I assumed that it was working. I got a lot of recordings that just flat out <laughs> Either God didn't want seen, or He wanted them seen and not heard. Because just like every sound person knows, if you've ever sat on a soundboard, there's two rules of thumb that you don't do. You don't get up from the soundboard as long as there's someone in front of the microphone, or as long as there's a microphone live. You shut it off. Or, the second one most important rule of thumb for most sound engineers, or people that work on soundboards, you always, always, always do a sound check. Now, as a network engineer, I also know that you always back up. And of course, <laughs> I never back up, so I'm always losing material. So, you know, the two things you should probably do in learning from me is not just about not do as I say, but say, or do as I say, not as I do, and not do as I do, but do as I say, is that the reality of what we experience often is the proof of what Jesus said when you reap what you sow. So if you're going to go along and just have faith that your soundboard is fine and that your sound checks are great, hey, the day will come when you'll find yourself screeching through a sound system that you should have done a sound check. Because guess what? Battery life, cable life, digital, digitized, or any kind of electrical impedance or electrical interference can cause a soundboard to just lose its settings, to change its reality of what people are hearing and what you think you are doing. So always and everything, always, double check, triple check, make sure you prove all things and hold fast that which is good. Even to the testing of sound, the checking of lighting, the reality of proving the scriptures, whether they be of the Lord their God or whether they've been paraphrased by some pastor, some teacher, some elder, some deacon, some person. Innocently, maybe. Used by Satan, most provocatively. Because one of the scriptures we're told is that Satan came to Eve and said, Half God said. Well, he misquoted, or she did. And God watched, as you know. And Satan provoked, as you know. But Eve made her choice, as you know. Your choice is to do as you choose to do, according to whatever will you want to exercise today. But if I were you, as I'm getting my, trying to get my studio, office, whatever bedroom, place, thing going with video, I would recommend to you, prove all things. One of the things that I found interesting today was that, you know, I had a text from a person who completely misunderstood what I wrote them. Not that that's unusual, because you see, it happens a lot when you don't see someone face to face. It happens a lot when you just read something as opposed to comprehend what you're reading. Some people don't comprehend well what they read, but they do make assumptions about what's being said rather than ask. God always said for us, according to reading His Word, to ask and we would receive. We have the Holy Spirit that can make true to us personally and applicable for us His Word, the Word of God, to make it live and living for us. But if we don't ask for God to do that, often you will read the Word and mistake the intent, the content, and the portent of what He's doing with you today. Make sure you prove all things and prove yourself to be found in the will of God by doing what the Word of God has said, as Jesus is alive and well and called the Word of God, that He wants to be consulted. He wants to be talked to. He wants to talk to you. All you need to do is to hear what He has to say to you. 
the person that wrote me, unfortunately, completely mistook and doesn't understand what I said. And I have no problem with that. <laughs> because, you see, the person never bothered to come see me. The person never bothered to come talk to me. The person never bothered to have a conversation with me. And my Father in Heaven knows what that's like. And I know what it's like for my Father in Heaven because I have conversation with Jesus daily. I have conversation with my Father who loves me. I take the time to ask the Holy Spirit to inspire me today. I hope that in giving you this heads up, shout out to sound engineers, this warning to be mindful of the things that you know you should do, the practical realities of every step, taking it step by step, going through the motions, so to speak, of doing what you know you ought to do, as Jesus used the word ought a lot. What you ought to do daily, make sure you do. Because you run off in your day half caught, and you're not prayed up, fed up, read up, done up with the Holy Spirit living in you. You may find by the end of your day you're fed up with life. And I don't mean fed as well as well fed by the food. You're fed up because you just can't put up with what's going on in the world today. The days are evil. The night is coming. The day is the night is far spent and the day is at hand. But what day break that may bring will not be something that's pleasant for the world to see. So we live in the latter days and we need to be mindful of the places we live and the things we're doing and what we man or man we ought to be. Because the choice is always yours to do what you want to do today. Even as I did. And I found this beautiful, wonderful teaching, this magnificent, well, at least I think so, <laughs> and you don't know so. But because it was such so that I did not do what I should have done in the sound check, we'll never know so what it was that God so wanted us to discover, except that He has already said, prove all things. Make full proof of your ministry by not only assuming things, but Doing the little things that God is watching. Doing the little things that make for the foundation stones that build up unto the structure that you're constructing and building in the house of God. Always be mindful to be the servant of all, but also be mindful of watching for those little things that slip up. The little things that get forgotten along the way. The little things that you might need to do today. For instance, telling your wife she, you love her. People I hear all the time say about it, death and dying and going to a funeral and all these stupid things. They tell me stupid statements that I hear all the time. And I know they're stupid because, you know, really, the person that died doesn't care. They're in heaven or they're in hell. Whether they made it or didn't, that's their choice. But they'll say, oh, I wish I could have only said. No, you don't. If you'd have really cared, you would have done it while they were there. Or if you already did it, then you should just rejoice that you had the chance to say so. So do so today while you hear his voice, the things that God wants you to do. Because you don't have tomorrow, Jesus said. It's not promised you. No one is promised tomorrow. You could die today, tonight, or overnight. But God gives grace and mercy, and so if we do have another day, God will allow you maybe in his grace to do what maybe you didn't do today. But really, what God has said in His Word and what Jesus has declared to us to be true, today, while it is today, harden not your heart, as it says in provocation. Today, if you hear His voice, do what He says. Take that moment to stop what you're doing, to be still, to hear His voice, to read His Word, to pray today, to be filled with the Spirit today, to be ready for that with which the Lord has made for you today. Now, I don't know what you're going to do. Me? Well, I'm kind of backing off a lot of things I'm doing. I'd love to tell you it's because I'm so wise and so smart. But it's because I keep beating my head against the wall and I'm not getting them done anyway, so it's like, okay, Lord, fine. You want me to do that? I'm stopping. And I'm not going to do anything except the Lord go with me to do that which He wants me to do today, tomorrow, and in eternity. I hope you discover those truths for yourself because the reality of your life is for you to live it. But where you spend eternity is for you to choose it. 
And God has already provided a way that you could live your life for the rest of eternity, enjoying life, enjoying His will, enjoying Jesus just as much as I am. Because I get a kick out of when I do record those things. And I go, oops! Oh well, praise the Lord. <laughs>